Okay, I'm ready. truck it seems uh, it seems so low but then yesterday I went under it
fresh filter but still shows already what like one or two restriction and we already at plus 21 celsius in the morning we're at plus 21 So this is 390, 390 north in New York. So this time they're sending us uh, via US 20 West 20, which is uh, exit 10. Exit 10. Like the route itself is pretty simple. US 20 West all the way to to New York 77. And then we take 77 North and there's a couple of truck stops there. I know that road. So US 20 West, New York 77 North and then we jump on uh, New York 33 West towards uh, Buffalo and then they want us to take they want us to go through downtown Buffalo but we'll see about that well I gotta follow the permit right so they send me that way so it, it's just that if we are there after 7 We'll have to stop because that's considered a uh, business district and there's no driving between 7 and 9 in the business district in Buffalo so I hope we're there before before 7 so I can get to the bridge so like distance wise it's not that far like the way my Google Maps is routing me now it says 116 kilometers which is I don't know 70 miles but first off we cannot go on the route like the Google Maps says and so it's gonna be probably close to 80 miles or 90 miles but then because of all these hills it's gonna take a while But I better save the save the battery. I made sure my battery is fully charged, but I want to show you guys the unloading as well. But that's probably going to happen around 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. Probably uh, five hours from now. But those guys are desperate over there. That's my understanding. They really want this machine. Tom, we're doing good up over there? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Alright, if something big falls off, you let me know, right? Uh, sure. Sure. I'll let you know. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you always have to, you know, establish a rapport with the pilot, so... If part of a boom falls off, you know, a wheel, a tire, something serious, you gotta... You gotta have him to alert you so you stop and pick it up and continue so and you see we understand each other so it's all good and I asked the permit lady to send me on a route where you know 
like as if I'm 14-2, 14-3, I said, like, because there's a lot of low bridges, I'm 13-11, with uh, probably two inches, I don't know, one and a half inches under the ramps. But I said, yeah, give me like 14-2 route, you know, just to be safe. And that's how she sent us 390 20 west 77 north 33 west but Tom says he read my uh, permit and he says on 77 there's one bridge he called it a 14 footer I said what do you mean 14 like is it 14 or what is it and he says well it says 14 but we went under it with a 14-1 load and nothing happened. So it's probably like 14-3, but still, you know, that's a very, very low clearance. I'd have to be careful over there. These bridges, they make me nervous, man. Well, you see, according to uh, Google Maps, the sunrise the sunrise is still is still not not in because that's another feature I like about using an internet enabled tablet is that it alerts me when you know it changes the color right it changes to daylight color So when I see black, that means that we're still in the twilight zone. And the machine was behaving, everything is good. I didn't see any movement anywhere. I was just occasionally tightening some chains. I was keeping an eye on that uh, that big yellow harness with hoses because they put a um, like a weak looking strap over there it's like a two inch strap but it seems to to be holding so Yeah, the truck does. The truck does seem to drive a bit better with this uh, filter. Like I mentioned, I'm using 25 micron filters. And I talked to a guy, to a friend, and he says, oh, he's, I said, what? And he has the same engine. I said, what filters do you use? And he said, 10. 10 microns. And so I went to the Cummins website and you can search there by application right and so I put in Kenworth like it's asking you what truck Kenworth model T880 engine Cummins X15 and there was a few answers over there it shows you what filters they recommend you know for like uh, for oil for fuel and for fuel they list two filters and I know those numbers because I tried the 10 micron thing before and in winter it did not work. It was getting plugged up too fast. But that's what this guy is using and he said, I never had the problem. So I'm thinking I'm gonna switch to that one uh, for the summer like I mentioned yesterday because Cummins says the other filter, because there's two fuel filters, right? Cummins says the second fuel filter has like a four microns or some something crazy like that and so if you use a uh, the primary filter the water separator with the you know with big size holes like 25 micron instead of 10 he says that second filter will will get dirty faster and so Cummins was telling me don't use 25 but in, why is it listed on your website and 
and I look at the I, I clicked on details and I look at the, you know each filter has all those numbers there efficiency how much water it, it uh, percentage of water it can retain or stop and I compared the two filters they're the same I think efficiency was 95% so they stop 95% of uh, particles but of course the 10 micron filter stops 95% of particles over 10 micron in size right and this one stops 95% of 25 my uh, of 20 of uh, 25 micron size particles so so 10 is definitely better you know if we lived in the ideal world where the fuel was always clean with no with no uh, you know additives and no garbage inside then yeah I would use five microns probably you know but when I'm back home I'm gonna go to the Kenworth parts department and ask him for uh, give me a couple of 10 micron filters because now I only have one spare left because now I always carry spare filters with me and I have the tool that special range so I can change it myself and so I used yesterday I used one of mine I gave it to the guy so he charged me I didn't want to do it myself since the truck the truck they were they were doing the grease right I said how much you charge to change the filter he says uh, 13 bucks I said good deal like you do it you know and then he charged me 40 bucks for the for the oil in the differential so I definitely need to fix that so once I'm back so the truck goes in the shop to change the seal and then I'm going to uh, to uh, to the parts department to get a couple of uh, these 10 micron filters and then my my accordion is somewhere on the way finally on uh, June 19th they posted a message on the Russian Post website and then on Canada Post website basically it says left Russia on the way to Canada after six days after it was uh, dropped off by the sender so these guys are very slow I don't know so hopefully I'll get a chance maybe to pick it up and you know start learning because the the accordion comes with a flash drive that I also purchased from the seller who is a teacher of music and that flash drive has 110 uh, video lessons on how to play this accordion so I'm hoping in three to six months I should be able to play at least a couple of you know popular Russian Russian uh, folk songs and then something crazy is happening with the car market now I checked the price of uh, used the Dodge Challenger on Auto Trader in Canada and it's just a couple of thousands a couple of thousand dollars below what I owe for the car and I decided to see what's gonna happen so I love the car but you know it's it's I was upside down when I bought it so now might be a good time to get rid of that debt so I put it I listed it on Auto Trader and I put it on uh, Kijiji the Canadian uh, free classifieds website and a bunch of guys emailed me yesterday oh I love the car uh, uh, can we get a Carfax uh, what's the VIN number I'm like screw this I'm not giving you the VIN number you, you want you want this car you come see the car right I want to see you in person I want to make sure you're not a crook and some guy emails me and the username says something like Midway or Midland cars Midway cars uh, what's the VIN number say so, hey this is a cash deal no dealers basically get lost he keeps emailing me uh, well I'd like to see the car well 
one thing for sure I can tell you even with the price I listed which would cover entirely my contract and give me a couple of thousand bucks for uh, cookies and, and donuts there's still a lot of interest I'm telling you just like the I watched the video of this guy in California where he was saying he has a Hellcat that he bought 15 16 months ago and now he has about 15,000 miles on it he paid 82,000 US and now they're offering him I forgot either 82 or 83 and he said <laughs> I feel tempted because you know the payments are big and he has a scat pack on order so very cool video he was saying now in the States and Canada there's such a shortage of cars that prices are through the roof and the car dealers are adding market adjustment like you will see a price of a brand new car let's say the car was 50 grand and now it says market adjustment plus 10,000 so dealers are trying to get away with adding 10 12 15 thousand dollars just because there's not not enough new cars on the market now because they have some kind of a cheap shortage yeah some some chips are missing in action so they cannot build new cars fast enough so like I said I don't want to sell the car I love that car but if the price is right just like in the TV show I, I can upgrade to something cheaper all right that's it they gave me the uh, 44,000 US for the deck they wanted me to borrow three times that amount because they want me to add that to the trailer right and refinance everything at a higher rate and two more years which just doesn't make any sense you know like why would I want to add two more years to my contract and increase my increase my interest some trip oh yeah is that your final answer you want me to take UW increases by two times if you cross after uh, 12 noon so because I was there at shortly before 8 the bridge authority charged me uh, 125 Canadian which is about 100 US yeah it's 100 US if you cross before 12 p.m. And it's 200 US if you cross after 12 p.m. So I did well. I did well at the bridge and I just showed them, you know, I called the supervisor when I stopped on the US side. 
and I gave him my PBA number which is the uh, bridge crossing approval number which I did a few days ago I told him my axle spacing is my axle weights you, you do like a free application online and then they send you approved or not approved and so I got approved and that PBA number it's like your reference number that you give to the bridge authority and they can quickly look it up on their computer and they know how heavy you are how tall you are you know how wide you are so it was pretty quick and Tom just dropped me off there at the duty-free and I guess he went back home he was driving a uh, Chevy Chevy Silverado white pickup truck I asked him how did he like it he said he liked it he bought it used he says nice truck 5.3 I think he said 5.3 V8 so now we're just gonna go yeah I think I'm gonna take I'm gonna take uh, 407 because the, the they have all new bridges over there everything is much taller and then I'll just go all the way to Young Street uh, via 401 so it's probably 120 130 miles from here so 200 kilometers because of the detour Well, I made it across the border. There's a super wide load, bro. I don't know, 16, 17 feet wide. And it looks like he has a modular trailer. Same as mine, tandem. Tandem. And then I see he has a flip axle hooked up to the tandem. And then he hooked up uh, a, rigid, a rigid tandem stinger. Like those things are dangerous, you know? It's easy to break them. And he has that massive piece it looks like a piece from a huge crane like a car body or something but massive massive very wide um, but yeah so uh, we made it on the old bridges the worst one was something I, I tried to avoid right when I was booking this load when I was booking the route I told my permit broker I said there's a bridge on New York 63 actual height 14 and they're not kidding about that one uh, and so I said I need to avoid that bridge and so she sent me on 20 right uh, from 390 so 20 west you avoid that and then but then 77 you have to take New York 77 north to 33 and my pilot Tom says well there's a 14 footer on 77 I'm like what are you talking about I, I asked my permit broker to give me a couple of inches extra just send me where at least 14 1 14 2 right and he says well we went under there with the 14 1 load but he said it is low and we come to that bridge and it's exactly the same deal what you have on 63 in that Genesio Genesio uh, the same little sign says actual height 14 feet 14 zero and I look at it and it's like really really low and so I, I stopped on the shoulder I dropped I dropped the front I don't know I was like this from the ground and I started going under it I look in the mirror it looks scary as heck and 
last trick in my book is this right so as soon as I click this the pusher goes up and because I have about 60,000 pounds now on my last three axles as soon as you lift the pusher the whole truck goes down and uh, like immediately because uh, of course it'll try to pump air but it cannot pump enough air to hold 60,000 only on two axles which is only four bags right and so that's a quick little trick that sometimes helps but of course you know you have to be going slow and of course there's still another one like this one right to drop the entire suspension but then because my trailer was already so low i know that i'll be pretty much on the ground you know so i cannot do that but dropping the lift axle you know saved my butt quite a few times because it's so much easier right like this if you try to do this if you try to drop the entire suspension and you're doing let's say 10 miles per hour you'll see an error message here see uh, on the dash saying that cannot do that because your speed is above i think it needs like five miles per hour so you know if you want to go at a at least at a walking speed well 10 miles is, that's like a bicycle speed right but so you have to be at a crawling speed to drop your suspension like entire suspension but then it takes time to to raise because now you you need air and six bags right so the lift axle is better because you only kill two airbags and you have four remaining so it's then once you uh, pass that obstacle in this case a bridge you drop it down and now the system is much quicker to fill up the two bags right that they were drained and so that's that's a couple of tricks what you can do but and again um, imagine if I had a non-hydraulic trailer I wouldn't be able to do this trip you know non-hydraulic mechanical because quite often there's nothing you can do about your height unless you modified your truck suspension because some people do that you know when they have a mechanical trailer they install I don't know either big airbags but they install um, a regulator there where they can adjust the uh, right height on the truck like on mine now it's pretty much set well I can still play with it if I unscrew some bolts in there right but I know some guys they have like a quick adjust system kind of like what I have on the trailer so you can do that on the truck but you know with with airbags don't there's only so much you can you can change so I still think hydraulic hydraulic neck trailers are much safer because you can go you can go pretty tall like if I need to go over the railroad track right but you see now I'm in position three and remember I said look how low it is with because of the long neck you see because of the long neck the trailer like if I had this hooked up to my truck and you see that it catches your fenders when you turn but now it's not doing that but when i dropped the suspension it starts catching the fenders because you see and that's that's position three so i tried to do position two before when we entered buffalo i you see one two three so i put this in here position two but it was way too low uh, because uh, you know i'm gonna damage the trailer like that's what happened last time over here right i hit a, a railroad track with that corner but all the chains are good so still that's the tallest point on this thing where the box is but i think we're good so i call the i call the super supervisor on site and he gave me a couple of pointers so basically look i'm here in fort erie and i'm going right pretty much downtown well toronto is here and google maps is sending me on qw and i don't want to do that because there's some crazy turns in here see it's sending me like this what so i called the guy and i said how can i can i take i, I want to go around I don't want to go through downtown I want to take uh, 407 this is 407 to 403 and 401 
And I said, what if I take this? Because that's like an extension of a freeway, this Allen Road. And because these guys are right at Eglinton, Eglinton and Young over here. This is Eglinton. And I know Allen Road, the freeway, you know, it ends at Eglinton. And this guy says, you cannot make a turn on Eglinton. I say, why not? He says, because it's all torn up. There's all construction over there. So there's no turn. So I'm guessing the road is closed then. Or you can uh, take maybe the previous exits, but that's the last exit is Eglinton. So I said, okay. He says, most, uh, he says, we, we, uh, had some big trucks before and he says they were just coming north on Young. North on Young, I said there's no way I'm going through downtown Toronto with this load. Uh, how about if I come south? I said what if I go around 401 and then take Young south? I said will you, and because he says they're going to unload me on the street. <laughs> and the construction site is uh, east of Young, just east, like one block. And I said, if I'm coming south, I'll be on the west side. Can you unload me? Can you still unload me on the Young Street? He says, oh yeah. He says, we have a bunch of guys here. We can cl uh, block the traffic, so we can stop the traffic for you. And I said, okay. So basically, I was hoping they could maybe disconnect my booster and flip the neck forget it because it's all downtown you know they're not gonna bring a forklift or a crane right on the street right it's not gonna happen and I put on my dirty clothes because uh, you know it's a site actually I'll be on the street but still they say they require they require safety safety PPE personal protection equipment so I got my boots on I got my hot hat over there and I have I have my vest so yeah man it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting but anyway so it's 833 now it says ETA 1020 but again I don't want to go like that because you see all uh, amber or yellow and red I go there in my car. Speaking about the car, let's see. Did anybody email me any requests to see my car? There was a bunch of guys yesterday. One guy, and and they all they all insist they all insist on seeing the Carfax. Like, wouldn't you want to see the car, you know? Not the car facts, but maybe you should see the car first and then ask for a car facts. Because to me, it sounds like some kind of a scam, you know? See that guy over there? Man. <laughs> that load, you definitely need like at least two pilots, you need police, you know? It was raining very bad in New York. The sky was all black. You know, it was pretty scary. But then when we got closer to the border, the, the sky became nicer, but now it looks like this weather is catching up with me. So I I think once I once I leave, it's gonna be okay. But yeah, I wish I so wish I had that drop side rail now. It would be so less stressful, you know, but I was telling the pilot about this. I said, yeah, I wanted to get a drop side rail deck, but the bank refused. So I made it to the construction site. And this is crazy over here. So basically that's Young Street. That's the central street of Toronto. But at least we're not downtown, we are at uh, Eglinton and Young. And so they're building a foundation here. And the guy explained to me what this machine will do is, you see they have this big tank over there. Like over there, that's that big tank. 
that one has, I think that has concrete and so when this thing will start drilling it's as down to uh, I think he, he said uh, 25 or 29 meters which is what which is like 85 feet and then this thing has a uh, attachments and hoses so they'll be able to put in concrete right in there you know and so and then the drill goes up by itself and by the time it's done they're going to be like a concrete uh, pile in the ground so that's what this machine does so it, it drills a hole in the ground that they fill with concrete which creates a like a concrete piling and these guys have 20 people in here so i came from there I had to go through some very narrow construction area like this I was like this much from a, a Jersey barrier but made it and so I stopped there and the guy says can you back and I said guys I have this I have the stinger and they said well you can probably block it right and I said yeah technically I can but I, I said then I'll have 80,000 pounds on three axles and he says well but you'll be going very slow very short uh, you know distance i said yeah okay let's do it and so they blocked the entire intersection here crazy with the uh, pedestrians and cars they blocked this in the back they blocked that street young street northbound they blocked young street southbound and they blocked that street over there and so i just went across the traffic over here towards closer to me and then I pulled sharp to the right towards the uh, Hansa Language Center building. And then I started backing in here. And my poor stinger was all making creaking noises, but it was there was no air in there, so we're just kind of like you know getting pushed on the on the pavement. But what do you do? And that's it. So now all the chains are off. My paperwork is signed. So now you see I, that was the only way to do this and of course the trick is when you're unloading in a situation like this they always want the trailer to be as close as possible to the entrance all right because this is a tracked machine and this is city a city street you know because at first my trailer was somewhere here and then i could have uh, disconnected and and uh, left the truck at the right before the intersection but they said no uh could you could you drop it and then take your truck behind and I said okay and so the the guy in the back there blocked the traffic again and I just went like this and of course this is crazy here I don't want to do anything with the stinger I don't know I'll just go uh, If I can go north, you know, that would be ideal. But again, there's that crazy narrow area over there. But yeah, going south, that's going to real downtown. And it's all very narrow and... I don't know. And across the street, I see a sign that says no trucks. But again, it's cool that there's so many people here. You know, they can... He says, hey, we can do whatever we want. We can we can uh, block he, uh, one guy says this is downtown Toronto he says I enjoy blocking the traffic <laughs> but because there's so much traffic right so they enjoy because people are you know a-holes sometimes right and so these guys say yeah we enjoy bl closing the traffic here So now they were str struggling with um, there's some kind of a safety bar safety bar like a red bar you know kind of like the bar they use on uh, uh, wheel loaders to lock the articulation point so there's a similar bar only much bigger and it's uh, painted red and it sits right under the counterweight and it hooks up the bottom of the house to the frame it's about three three and a half feet long like about one meter and 
so and they were trying to take it off and I don't know the guy is there I think he's trying to he's reading the manual because all these machines are slightly different because he has to uh, he has to move the house a little bit in order to release the pressure on that bar you know just a little bit move it like sideways a tiny little bit but I'm not sure why they cannot do that when I they, when they're already on the job site but this is such a busy tiny area I'm guessing they see that's like an office building or what looks like a hospital or something no I think it's a condo so they have a bunch of uh, sea cans 20 foot containers here uh, portable toilet and I see they have a small drill rig so this is much bigger so they were really they were really waiting for this because without this thing they cannot they cannot put those spikes in the ground right they cannot make those concrete poles and without those poles the building will fall over tip over so Captain Sergei is part of a very important operation here and this is a stark contrast with the US where nobody's wearing masks anymore at least where I've seen in New Jersey and New York construction guys are not wearing them either but I see that all the passes most of the passes by people that go on the sidewalk they are they're wearing masks but I'm getting tired of this thing anyway so I have them somewhere here yeah I have them here but I didn't bother yeah now I'm just waiting for them to unload this and uh, then I just hide my chains go back to the trailer and and um, and head over north okay, see I'll show you where we are so check this out this is Young Street this is Young this is uh, this is Eglinton like another big street Eglinton goes west to east and so that blue dot that's my truck and you see that's how I came that's 401 this is 401 and so this is young so I just have to take young back then take 401 west and here's the airport and then past the airport another Milton and there's you see it says home in here because that's uh, uh, set up as home on Google Maps so that's Cambridge so you see Cambridge is probably like 60 70 miles west of uh, Toronto anyway I wanted to show you unloading but I don't know what's taking so long so this guy is they're still I'm guessing they're still trying to unhook that bar the safety bar and just for my own comfort i'm telling you guys i the guy was sitting in the in the cab i said hey do you mind if i just climb briefly on the top and i climb in the top and i look at the tallest point and that one had a st sticker some kind of a sticker with some numbers on it kind of like a serial number or something and i double checked that sticker to make sure it had no scratches it was not torn because that sticker is like three millimeters above the tallest point and it was all plastic like a plastic uh, rubber type of material with a sign on it with the stamped uh, information and I'm so happy that I climbed up there and nothing no scratches nothing but yeah something like this can be really stressful you know now if you're in the west if you're somewhere western US western Canada nobody cares about 14 feet uh, 14 foot overall height but over here I went on a one bridge that said 4.2 meters uh, on 401 so I slowed down I put my flashes on and I dropped my um, I lifted my pusher axle 
because 14 feet is 4.26 meters all right so you are six centimeters or two and a half inches taller than 4.2 meters and it was only one lane and I didn't have time to change lanes like the next lane was 4.3 meters which is uh, 14 2 but this one was 4.2 which is less than 14 I'm telling you I'm so happy I'm so happy so now I'm gonna take a couple of days off maybe I'll start looking for a load uh, today is Monday right yeah I'll start looking for a load usually Wednesday is a good day so I'm gonna take my truck maybe take it to uh, to the guys in Aberfoyle and Guelph because I need to replace the seal on the front differential on drive axle one and also remember it I my air dryer my air dryer is leaking and that's usually happens uh, after a while either I have to check change the uh, filtering element sometimes that causes the problem or they just they just have to replace the entire air dryer I had this all the time on the Mac on the International they just start leaking after a while so so those are the plans 